Welcome back all of you to the next session of how to use the actuarial science calculator tutorial. So as promised in the previous session, the first thing let's cover in this video. So in the last session, we had discussed if we press, I'm sorry, if we press 1 by 3, then the answer very finally gives us 1 divided by 3 in fraction form. So what we wanted to see was, of course we know to convert it into decimal, we can simply press the SD button. But to make it default decimal, what do we do? Now, as you can see, you have to understand how to speak with the calculator because actually the calculator is also speaking with you. You can see on this calculator, the only way in which this can be changed is the setup mode. You can understand that this is a setup issue. So how to enter into the setup mode? We can see setup is written over here in yellow. So of course, first we press shift and then we press this button. So as soon as you press this button, you have many options for setting up your calculator as per your requirements. Now the first setup, you can see that each uh, setting is uh, denoted by a number or by a digit. So by simply pressing that digit, you will be able to enter into that menu. Now to change it from fraction to decimal, <coughs> we press 1 which is math 10 and number 2 which is line 10, not 10, IO. So you can see the calculator is asking you as soon as I press 1 then it is showing me two options. If I press 1 then it will give me results in math format, if I press 2 it will give me uh, result in line format which means the decimal format. So which one do I want? Currently it is already in the 1 mode. I want it in the 2 mode which is the decimal mode. So I will press 2. Alright. Now let's try it again. 1 by 3 is equal to. So as you all can see it is now showing it to us in decimal mode by default. This button will keep on working but now this time what will happen? Now we have set line mode as default, so naturally the math mode will be the one it is converted into. Taking a complicated one, 9 by 5, 1 by 8, uh, 1.8 sorry, and in fraction mode it is 9 by 5. We can take something a little complicated as well. So again fraction mode let's enter, 6 into 3 plus 5 and in the denominator let's say we want 5 equal to now we are getting it in the fractional mode decimal mode the answer is 4.6 okay next one more thing so for example let's say I want to do 2 by 3 so it's coming in decimal mode since we've changed the setup but as you can see there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 decimal places there are 10 decimal places which the calculator returns by default. But in your actuarial science workings, you will be requiring sometimes 4 decimal places, sometimes uh, 5 to 6 decimal places, depending on the topic you are doing and the paper you are covering. So according to that, it is not always possible or uh, it is a hassle to always round off your calculations by reading from the calculator. Right? So if it would be good if our calculator itself returned us calculations with whatever number of decimal points we require. So let's say I'm appearing for the CM1 paper. The CM1, CS1 paper, we always recommend using at least 5 to 6 decimal places. So how to set or fix that my output is always received in 5 to 6 decimal places. To do that, again, it is of course a setup issue. So we enter the setup area. Now after the setup menu has opened, you can see near number 6 or the digit 6 we have an option of fix. See again the calculator is talking to you fix 0 to 9. How many decimal places do we need? Right? By default it was 10 decimal places. Now we can fix it between 0 to 9. I want to fix it to let's say 6 decimal places. So as you can see my output has immediately altered itself and rounded it off to 6 decimal places. Trying another one, let's say 33 by 100. Again it is coming to 6 decimal places. So even though the last 4 
decimal places are zero, which have no value as such. But since we have converted it into six decimal places, all our answers will always come with six decimal places after the decimal point, right? Now these two were very important things to understand for the decimal area. Coming next is exponentials and logarithms. Again, a very very important concept in our actuarial science journey. So first of all, I want you all to understand the difference between ln and log. The difference between ln and log. You can see on your calculators as well. You have three buttons pertaining to logarithms. The first one is the log button. Second is the ln button. And then we have a log button with base empty as well as input empty. What is the difference between the three? Log, the ln button means log with base e. The log button means log with base 10. And sometimes in case you want to take a unique base, since e and 10 are the two commonly used bases, we have them as buttons. In case I want to take out log with base 3, then I can use the third button where I can input my base as well as the uh, input for the expression. Okay, we all know log 9 base 3 would be 2 since 3 square gives us 9. Okay, <coughs> in your actual science journey, always remember that even if we are saying log, we 99.9% .9 of the times mean the ln button. Uh, most of our calculations are calculus based and calculus has always taken e as the base for logarithms. So make sure you use the ln button and not the log button until and unless it's a special case where you have to use the base 10. So let's try out something. ln of let's say again as you can see a bracket has opened. A bracket opening means that you can input any kind of expression also. It is not necessary that you have to input a digit or a number. You can input an expression as well. So instead of typing ln 8, let's say I had to solve for 8 and then take out the logarithm. So I could simply write ln of 5 plus 3. Same happens for log, but I'm not showing you log because it will lead to confusion. You all will be requiring ln only mostly. Now this one also as I showed you all, again let's see. We know we need the e, right? So I can see the e over here in red. I can see the e over here in red. Just the last one, last row. Then I move on to the input. So let's type in E only again because we know what should the answer be. Of course it should be 1 because the base and the input are both the same. So the answer is coming to 1. Right? So that is about the ln and log. Now again in our uh, calculations we will be using exponential or E a lot. So how to use that? We can see there will be many things in the power of E. You will be uh, doing different distributions where you will be requiring the exponential as inputs in your expressions. So how to use that? We can see that it is in yellow color on top of the ln button. So yellow we press shift and we press the ln button. So we an exponential window opens for us. Now in the power we can type in whatever we want. Uh, most of the times, for example, in normal distribution, let's say, you will be required to put in a lot of things in your power. You can input a square root in the power. You can input a fractional square root in your power. So as you can see, whatever you write on your papers or your answers, as it is, the equation can be typed into the calculator and then you can use it accordingly. So let's say, I want to do something like this. Now, of course, as I had told you earlier, it follows Bodmus. So I wanted 6 plus 3, 9 to be multiplied by 2. That's why I had to use a bracket to consolidate the 6 plus 3. If I would have omitted the brackets, what would have happened? 3 into 2 would have taken place first and then it would be added to 6, right? 
and in the denominator let's say I want to press 2 so this is my output okay that is how you use the exponential button next up we have factorial permutations and combinations very easy things factorial as we can see is present over here x factorial any number you type you want an exclamation mark after that so you simply press shift and this button you get your exclamation mark and then you can use it normally let's say I want to add 5 to it you use it just like a normal equation permutations and combinations we can see on top of the multiply and division sign NPR and NCR are given in yellow color so again let's say I get the P and I get the C so let's say I want to take out 3C2 so I press 3 C and 2 it will come as 3 a little more complicated one let's say I want to do 11 C sorry 11 C 3 165 165 combinations of choosing three things out of 11 things 165 base okay same goes for permutation as well then we have the trigonometric functions very easily visible on the calculator we have sine cos and tan and exactly on top of these buttons in yellow color we have the inverse trigonometric functions which is sine inverse cos inverse and tan inverse this calculator is not so much used for trigonometry there will be very very rare cases where you will be needing trigonometric functions in your calculations so that is why we do not have separate buttons for uh, the ratios for the other ratios which is basically the reciprocals of the three cosec sec and cot you can simply use it by one divided by sine whatever etc you do not need separate buttons on the calculator for performing those calculations so that is it for this video. Thank you all of you.